The following is presented by Craftsy. Explore more innovative photo techniques with Nicole D'Alessio at Craftsy.com. Hi, I'm Nicole D'Alessio, and I'm going to be showing you how to draw on top of a photo and also add some texture and color using masking effects. You'll notice that I'm using a Wacom tablet. I'm using the Pro version, but there's also the Creative Pen and Touch tablet, which is like an ultra slim version of what I'm working with now. So I really like using the tablet, especially as a left-hander, and when I'm doing some drawing on top of a photo, I find that I have a whole lot more control. So over here in my layers palette, I have a background image and there's a girl scootering down a trail with the mountains in the back and the sky. And on the top layer, I have a texture of some graffiti and cement, which I found and took this picture close to where I took the original. Down on the background, I'm first going to be starting by adding a couple of adjustment layers. First, I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer because I'm going to try to add more color Using the saturation slider, I'm going to boost the color so that the green grass and hills look greener than green and the sky looks a little bit bluer than blue. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add my texture. Now, it's covering the photo underneath, but if I change the blend modes over here, I can change what it looks like. You can try different blend modes to see which ones you like best. but I think I'm going to stick with a multiply blend mode. I find that the effect is too strong, so I can start by reducing the opacity. And this makes it a little bit more subtle. Now, I like the texture and the graffiti on the top, but I don't want it affecting the, the bottom part so much. So what I'm going to do first is apply a layer mask. And then I want to add a gradient that's going to fade it from the top to the bottom. So over in my color swatches, I'm going to have the black in the front. Now I'm going to go over to my gradient tool, and I'm going to choose the gradient that has the black fading away. I can pull and drag down, and it will gradually disappear. Now I started from the top to the bottom, when in reality I really wanted the opposite. So I can do Command Z to undo. And this time I'm going to try it from the bottom, stretching from the bottom to the top. Okay, so now I have the texture on the top, but it's a little bit on the mountains. So now what I'm going to do is make sure I'm still selected on the layer mask, and I'm going to grab a brush, still having the black chosen in the front. And I can adjust my size on my brush over here to make it a little bit bigger. And then over on the top, I'm going to click this on so it's pressure sensitive. And that way, if I press down harder, it will erase more. So then I'm brushing away some of the texture on the top of the mountains, but leaving a little bit still there. Okay, and I think I'm pretty happy with the way it is now. Next, what I'm going to do is doodle on top of this picture, which is going to help to kind of blend it into the graffiti and make it look like it was something that was already painted there. So next, I'm going to add a brand new layer, and I'm going to doodle in some sun and some clouds. So first, I'm going to start with the sun. And over here, now I think I want it 100%, so I'm going to turn off this. And I'm going to make my brush really tiny, about 8 pixels, and I'm going to keep it as a hard brush. And I'll place my sun over here. I'm going to draw a little curly Q, and I want to make sure I do yellow. I'm going to choose my color. I'm going to do Command-Z to undo. And I'm going to go over here in the color swatches and choose a sunny orange-yellow. Okay, so I have a nice little sunny shape, and then I'm going to do some rays over here. And so this is another time where it's really nice to use the Wacom, because I can do a lot better a job on drawing and doodling. Now I'm going to add a sun glow layer. So I'll call this one glow. And I'm going to keep the same color, but I'm going to reduce the hardness to zero. And I'm going to use the bracket tools to adjust. 
and make it a bigger area. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of the glow to make it more subtle. Next, I'm going to add one new layer, this time for clouds. I'm going to switch over to the white so that the white is in the foreground. Go back to a hard and small brush and draw myself a couple of puffy white clouds. I'll add one new layer again, and I'll just call this puffy. I'm going to change my brush again, back to zero on the hardness, and up the size. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint in some fluffy whiteness. And then I can reduce the opacity again to make it blend in a little bit more. I think I'll do the same thing with the opacity of the cloud outline and even with the sun outline. Okay, now I'm happy with it. I can go ahead and flatten my image. So I'll go layer and flatten image, and I'm done. For more great techniques like this, be sure to check out my class on Craftsy.com.